I'm Ashley and today I'm going to be doing my May wrap up. I managed to read five books in May and I'm pretty sure you all know how these videos work by now so I'm just going to jump right in. The first book I read was Skylarks by Karen Gregory. This book was sent to me by Bloomsbury as part of an Instagram tour but I decided to pick it up at the start of May because I was just really wanting something more light-hearted than my usual reads. This one is a romance between two girls and it kind of has a focus on social class and poverty as well. When I first started this I didn't think I would get along with it because the focus on poverty is there a bit too much. In the beginning it does treat every single line as an opportunity to get the point across that being poor is hard and it just started to get a little bit too much because it literally was every single line, every page. If the opportunity wasn't there then it would be made, some really strenuous link would be pulled on to bring it into the conversation and it just didn't seem natural to me so it did start wearing on me a little bit but it did kind of fit into the story a lot better the further on you went. But then later in the book when things started to turn a lot more political that ended up being my favourite side of it because it's not something you read about a lot in young adult books and somehow in a lot of YA they are teenagers that don't worry about money and just can miraculously afford and have everything they need. <laughs> so it's nice to see a book like this where that isn't the case. The family and friendships in this felt authentic and it was nice to see a gay romance that wasn't the problem of the story. It was generally accepted in this for the most part so that was a nice side of contemporary that you don't usually see. I did have a realisation when reading this though that the main reason why I don't get along with contemporary as much as I do with other genres is because I worry a lot and with contemporary whatever the characters are worrying about it tends to end up reflecting on me and I start worrying about similar things so my general reading experience of contemporary books doesn't tend to go very well because it makes me feel bad which is quite a strange realisation but it was reading this book that made me think that and probably reflects on my rating so I just thought I would mention it and I rated this book 3 out of 5 stars I then picked up Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier I finally read it! Woo! <laughs> this one is about a woman who marries a man and when she tries moving into the household she really struggles to fit in because he had a wife who previously died and everybody apparently loved this wife. She is the one that's called Rebecca. And so her trying to fit into the household and kind of taking on the same role, she really struggles with. Daphne de Maurier's writing is so descriptive and lovely to read. I, I was kind of a little bit blown away because she would spend paragraphs describing flowers and things which would normally bore me but in this one it didn't become boring at all. But what I was most happy about when reading this is that it turned a lot darker than I was expecting. Now I don't know whether I'm just more paranoid than the main character in this but whenever one of the problems was another character creating a problem on purpose I saw that coming. So I don't know whether I just mistrust everybody and thought the worst of them all but in this the main character was surprised where I wasn't for a lot of the time. However, there is a dark twist to it which I didn't see coming and probably should have done but I didn't and it just turned the story a lot darker than I was expecting and I absolutely loved it. I'm so glad that there's more to the story than just a paranoia and miscommunication between the two main characters because halfway through that started to get a bit repetitive and it started annoying me that they just weren't talking. <laughs> it's so annoying when the main problem comes from miscommunication. Just talk to each other for god's sake. <laughs> But yes, I'm glad for that darker twist that added more to the story. I do think I built this up a bit too much for myself after waiting to read it for so long because I did kind of expect it to become a new favourite book of mine but it didn't quite get there. But it was still a really good book and I really enjoyed it so I rated it 4 out of 5 stars. I then picked up Scythe by Neil Schusterman which was sent to me by Walker Books. This follows Citra and Rowan who are taken away to become apprentice Scythes. A Scythe in this world is a professional killer because in this world Death has been beaten, everybody is naturally immortal, however the population still needs to have some level of control and that's where the size come in. It was definitely the world that held my intrigue in this because apparently they have all the knowledge. <laughs> There's nothing more to be learned and because of that they knew how to create a sort of utopian society where everybody was equal, no government was needed and death was beaten. However, as you might expect, some people still want to try and create power imbalances where they have more power so the political side of things I found particularly interesting to see how on the surface it looks like everybody's equal but really nobody's equal still. However I did have some problems with this. First of all I was really hoping that no romance would happen but it did and it's just so disappointing when it's not necessary. 
and it doesn't add anything to the story it just makes my heart sink a little bit because it's not needed in every single book <laughs> two i was really uncomfortable with how suicide is represented in this because accidents do still happen in this world but if you die from it then you are regenerated a few days later so because of that you saw characters doing what we would class as suicidal acts but treating it as a game because they would just wake up a few days later you also find out at some point that these sites are the only people who are allowed to commit suicide and actually die from it so in that sense it was treated like a privilege and i just really found it uncomfortable to read about suicide as either a game or a privilege especially because both scenarios were either unnecessary or could have been avoided especially the thing about it being a game that none of those scenes added anything to the story so i don't understand why it was there and as well as that there were two people who were explicitly described as being overweight and both of them were treated appallingly in terms of description i'm talking literally being compared to planets and and it sounds like i'm nitpicking but those two characters were described awfully and it was just so obvious to me that it was horrible that i didn't like it <laughs> But other than those problematic elements, I did find it a quick read, it was quite an entertaining plot, and so I rated it 3 out of 5 stars. The next book I read was actually a pretty random reread for me. It was The Lovely Bones by Alice Bold. I read this when I was really young, probably about 10 or something, and I don't know how I got hold of it because it's really not the story you would give to someone that young. It's about a 14 year old girl who is murdered and it involves rape, so if you're interested in this book, be careful of that if you're triggered by anything like that. And it kind of just follows her watching her friends and family from heaven. It's quite an interesting take on the idea because you're reading it through her eyes and you get to read some of the other characters thoughts which obviously she shouldn't know but because she's in heaven you don't really know how this world works but it does give it quite a disjointed feeling when it's paired with her memories, the flashbacks, what she's thinking at the moment. It's a very disjointed story but it does make sense while you're reading it. As you might expect it is very intense on the sadness and grief side of things so I definitely wouldn't recommend this to anybody who has recently lost someone but for me that did give it quite a high rating because it's really hard to write grief well I feel like and the author just did it particularly well I thought. So I rated this one a 4 out of 5 stars. And then the final book that I read this month was The Ancient Guide to Modern Life by Natalie Haynes. This is a non-fiction about ancient Greek and Rome and it kind of compares it to modern day life because a lot of people think that we've become so much advanced from ancient civilizations but actually we have a lot more in common with them than you might imagine so this book kind of talks about that i found this book fascinating it covers so many topics like politics economics theater and entertainment women philosophy lots of different things like that there were a couple of chapters where i weren't as interested as you might expect but for the most part i did just find it fascinating and i sped through this book and I got along with Natalie Haynes' writing so well. She has the general storytelling, she has anecdotes about her own past. It's not too academic, she doesn't just expect you to understand the references she's talking about and she describes them in a way that's not patronising. She also has a sense of sarcasm that I'm pretty sure we could all relate to. This is probably the non-fiction book on my shelves that I've enjoyed the most out of any of them. And I rated this one at 4.5 out of 5 stars. <laughs> so those are all the books that I read this month. Let me know if you've read any of them and what your thoughts on them were. And let me know what your favourite book of May was. Other than that, I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye!